Hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Intech On, the Social Distance Series. During this period, our industry is the definition of critical infrastructure, and we thought it'd be important to connect with everybody and cover a topic affecting us all, biosecurity. I'm Chris Blosfeld, and as Intech On, the Social Distance Series is your space to connect with industry experts. Joining me today is Bill Lovett, our expert discussing biosecurity. Among his many current endeavors, Bill is the founder and chairman of Joseph James Capital Partners. He's also an advisor for Foul Furious Capital Partners, as well as executive chairman of Sour Brands Incorporated. Bill has more than 30 years experience in the industry and is the former CEO of Pilgrims. Welcome, Bill, and thank you for joining us to discuss this important topic. Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to talk about a subject that I believe is most relevant uh, today, given uh, what we're all experiencing in the world with the, uh, the current uh, coronavirus uh, that uh, began in China a couple of months ago or a few months ago and has now spread around the world and you know i think we've always thought about biosecurity in the context of other things um, in our case in the poultry industry uh, the birds obviously uh, but now we're having to experience uh, ourselves what biosecurity means as through social distancing and and uh, other things things that we're doing and it's uh, I can tell you uh, from my perspective and I think many others feel this way it's a very very different feeling than we've uh, felt in our lives and uh, it brings the idea uh, and the concept of biosecurity uh, close to home if you will and I think it points out uh, the critical nature and importance of biosecurity to uh, our industry and our, our livelihoods and uh, so I want to uh, take the opportunity then to talk about uh, biosecurity uh, as we've thought about it in our industry and uh, perhaps as we can think about it uh, with a little more clarity as we go into the, the future, both for ourselves and for uh, obviously our birds, our livelihoods and our industry reputation. If you think about the definition of biosecurity, it, it literally means uh, the security or safety of life. Uh, and that can be applied, we know, to uh, the birds uh, uh, for which we're responsible uh, in our industry and, and now uh, obviously closer uh, to ourselves and our families, uh, our own uh, health and safety and, and livelihood and, and our reputation. And so um, as I've sat back and, and thought about this uh, in the past few weeks, really, um, I think I've uh, sort of segmented it into three buckets or three areas. Um, I think about it in terms of frontline defense. Uh, I think it in, about it in terms of once you sort of move through the frontline defenses in biosecurity, then how do we fortify uh, our, our programs and our surroundings. So fortification uh, would be the second bucket. And then finally, how do we force multiply uh, an effective biosecurity plan? In other words, what are things that we can do to uh, maintain the sustainability and uh, the relevance of biosecurity as things around us change as obviously we've seen in the past few uh, days and, and weeks. So that's sort of how I want to talk about biosecurity. And then I look forward to addressing some questions that uh, participants and viewers may, may have uh, about, about, this, about this subject. So let's talk first about uh, frontline defense. If I think about frontline defense, um, it's really down to the basics, right? So I think uh, an effective biosecurity 
plan uh, must include first uh, as a precursor best management practices. And if, they, if you think about from uh, a bird's uh, safety and wholesomeness standpoint, you obviously think about uh, monitoring water consumption. You think about uh, daily and weekly feed consumption. You think about uh, expected weight gains over a period of time, whether that's daily or weekly or, or monthly, given the, the bird's age. If I think about uh, air quality, uh, maintaining uh, uh, optimal air quality, temperature, ventilation. If I think about uh, control of uh, who gets on our, our farms and in our houses, I think, uh, you know, uh, having a control mechanism of knowing uh, what's going on uh, on our farms and, and in our houses is critically important. And uh, being aware of changes in, in, in those expectations as, as time goes on and as things around us uh, change. So we're talking about basic animal husbandry. Uh, you also throw in there, you wanna maintain a farm that's free of debris and trash, uh, well-kept, uh, you know, having a, a good sanitary practices is, is always a, a plus both uh, from a bird uh, growth and health standpoint as well as, as biosecurity. And so, you know, that's the first thing that I think about. The second thing under the frontline defense segment is having a, a well-documented and defined uh, biosecurity plan, one that's well thought out, one that's well communicated, uh, you know, this is where communication and training, I think, is, is a must because we deal with uh, a vast number of, of people uh, in our industry that, that have to execute uh, these plans. Uh, ongoing training is something I'll talk about in, in a few minutes. So I think that's, uh, that's critically important as well. And then um, routine communication. Uh, we can't look at communication and training as sort of a once a year or, or even once a month uh, affair. It has to be sort of ingrained in our culture. And, you know, biosecurity, like anything else, is going to change with, uh, you know, the changes that come uh, from the world around us, whether it's a, a change in a virus, a change in a disease, uh, a change in a breed, change in genetics, feed, uh, et cetera. So, uh, staying relevant through communication, I think, is is critically uh, important. So, again, all of all of the above that I've talked about, I think, is uh, is necessary uh, when we're talking about the basics, or uh, another way to say the frontline defenses of our biosecurity plan. The second segment that I'll uh, talk about is fortification. So how do we take the basics and make them stronger over time, uh, keep them relevant to what's happening today? And I think one of the things that comes to mind there within our plan has to be an effective, uh, a changing and an ongoing surveillance program. Uh, besides communication, I don't know that there's much uh, of anything that's more important and surveillance in, in thinking about biosecurity and disease prevention. Um, and there's, there's many way to think about surveillance. You know, we can think about monitoring our water consumption and how do we monitor that? And I think we have to have a more scientific method of monitoring water and feed and air quality uh, as we go on. And we, not only do we need to monitor it, but we also need to record it. And the reason that I think monitoring and recording uh, in the context of surveillance is important is we know that as temperature changes, we know that as uh, climate changes, we know that the need for doing different things related to biosecurity is going to change. And so when we notice those changes, we need that record uh, to form that point of reference for us to know you know, what perhaps is, has, uh, you know, affected uh, a change. And so, and I think that's where we can start to think about working in technology uh, and our surveillance. Um, I don't think we can have a, an effective surveillance system without the use 
of technology. And I think that's becoming more important. And uh, I'll talk more about the integration of technology when we talk about force multiplication, but I think a, a minimum requirement would be a way to electronically monitor the water consumption, feed consumption, air quality, and uh, access and visitors to, to our farms and, and houses. I think the second thing that I can think about related to uh, fortification is situational awareness. How can we keep ourselves situationally aware because uh, we know one thing, once, you know, the minute we finish documenting and developing a, a, any kind of plan, whether it's biosecurity or anything else, uh, the world around us is going to change and it's going to require us to uh, make changes in our programs because of that. And if we're not situationally aware, then there's, there's a lot of things we're going to miss. And I think we can all point to, uh, things that we now wish we had done uh, relating to the current uh, COVID-19 uh, situation that if we had had a more self-aware surveillance program with the use of technology, we could have been a lot further ahead than where we are in, in changing the curve of, of infections. And so I think the same sort of thought process can be applied uh, to, to our own biosecurity plans in, in the poultry industry. Uh, so situational awareness, um, for example, uh, monitoring feed inventories. Uh, how can we uh, better to monitor feed inventories to, to know more about feed consumption? Uh, how can we uh, better monitor air quality uh, on an ongoing basis? I think that another thing that I think about in terms of an eff effective way to fortify uh, biosecurity is uh, in auditing. Uh, how can we take a, a segment of our biosecurity plan on an ongoing basis and audit that uh, to make sure that it, you know, what we believe is happening is is actually happening. And there are a number of ways through uh, the help of our our integrated companies that we can can do that. So I think auditing is uh, definitely uh, an important part and should be uh, documented as well. Uh, I mentioned communication earlier. Uh, you know, communication and surveillance, I think, are the two most important uh, factors uh, in uh, fortifying our, our biosecurity uh, programs. And again, I think about how can we better use technology in communicating? How can we better uh, utilize technology uh, in, uh, in surveilling uh, uh, our environments? Uh, around them. And so again, those are the, I think the important things uh, with regard to uh, fortification uh, that we can think about. And that kind of gets me to uh, the last segment and that's force multiply. Force multiply is actually a military term. Uh, and it literally means, you know, how can we make a small force or a small amount of resources uh, appear much larger than they actually are, and and how can we make a smaller amount of resources become more effective than our known capability or capacity of those resources? And so I think about force multiplication as an effective tool in in creating uh, a more effective biosecurity uh, plan as as we go forward. And this is where I think technology can have the biggest impact, and it's not just technology. It's how we network all available technologies uh, into one system or into one communication plan so that we can better to monitor and, and keep up with, with what's happening at all times uh, in, on a real-time basis. Uh, because uh, even if we employ technology uh, to monitor things, if that information is, uh, is too old, uh, you know, it may not do us any good. And so the faster we can get relevant uh, information uh, to our decision-making, I think the, the better uh, that technology will be uh, and information will be put, put to use. Also think about, um, you know, how can we ensure that uh, our management teams uh, are held accountable and, 
and have proper levels of ownership as it relates to um, our biosecurity plans. And, you know, I think about making biosecurity as much a part of our management culture as anything else. And I think uh, one of the most effective ways to do that is integrating uh, biosecurity through, um, you know, key performance indicators uh, into our uh, dashboards and into our uh, daily and weekly and monthly and annual uh, uh, management uh, information systems and, you know, making it a part of our incentive management incentive plans, uh, for example. Uh, uh, another thing that, that comes to mind in terms of force multiplication is, you know, if, if we don't have an open mind to learning uh, new things, uh, new, uh, adopting new technologies, adopting new ideas, learning things that, you know, happen either in a different industry or in a different part of the world, uh, then, you know, over time we tend to become complacent and we allow our biosecurity uh, programs to, to be, uh, become less relevant uh, to what is, is required. And so I think uh, actively seeking uh, new ideas, actively seeking uh, new technologies and thinking about how those can uh, help uh, force multiply and fortify uh, our systems uh, is important. So in, in a nutshell, uh, that's how I think about biosecurity. And I think we uh, can make sure that um, uh, biosecurity is, uh, uh, stays top of mind, uh, stays relevant, and uh, helps us uh, uh, maintain sustainability of what I think can be the most valuable uh, food input that we have in the world as it relates to, uh, to protein. And uh, it's, it's just absolutely critical. And uh, again, I, I would remind us that, you know, the current environment is, is a, a wake up call perhaps that uh, we've not been doing enough from a human biosecurity standpoint, and we can always improve, uh, you know, what we can do uh, in protecting and preserving, uh, you know, the, the birds uh, for which uh, we're, uh, we have under our care. So uh, in a nutshell, um, now that's, that's how I think about it, Chris. Thank you, Bill. Some very good information indeed. We also reached out to some of our partners in the industry to get their take or questions on biosecurity as well. And our first question comes via video from Jack Diller in Ohio. Hi, Bill. This is Jack Diller from Cooper Farms in Ohio. My question is, what role does information management have to play in biosecurity? And what are some specific information management tools that you've seen to assist in biosecurity? Well, certainly, um, and there's, there's many uh, methods and, and uh, uses of current technology uh, when it comes to communication and surveillance. Uh, I know MTech offers uh, a lot of that technology and, you know, I have been a customer of MTech for uh, many years now and, and found uh, the technology in terms of uh, monitoring, uh, you know, what's going on as it relates to feed consumption and, and other uh, areas of, of animal husbandry, very, very valuable. I think about the use of cameras. How can we integrate uh, cameras and, and video technology more into our information systems? I, I'm reminded when uh, I used to spend a lot of time in the UK, uh, I would uh, fly into uh, London Heathrow Airport and then I would connect to a, a flight to Belfast, Northern Ireland. And uh, always uh, when I boarded the aircraft uh, to go to Belfast, uh, they would not uh, ask me for a boarding pass. I would have to step up in front of the screen and it would take a picture of my face. And so through facial recognition, uh, they controlled who uh, you know, got on board uh, those aircraft. And I think, uh, that's, that's a great example of how we can integrate uh, newer and more technology uh, into surveillance and, and communication of things that are, that are happening uh, real time uh, on our farm, uh, just as a, as a small example. So thanks for the question, Jack. I also think about um, you know, how can we network uh, all of our technology together? And I'll, I'll go back and, and remind you of what I talked about in the force multiplication segment. Um, it's one thing to have the information available uh, as a look back, 
but many times, depending on the age of that information, if it's, if it's too old, it's going to be not, uh, irrelevant. And so I think through networking, uh, that t- technology uh, gets us more real time and, and makes that information more actionable as it relates to preserving and, and protecting our flocks. Thank you, Bill, for that answer. Our next question comes via email from Steve Bolton at Wayne Farms. Steve's question is, how will biosecurity and restrictions in this age impact the flow of goods between countries? Yeah, thanks for the question, Steve. Great question. Uh, You know, for, gosh, I guess several decades now, uh, every country uh, that is a a major exporter of uh, food and in this case, uh, poultry, has dealt with um, phytosanitary uh, issues as it relates to uh, gaining access to, to foreign markets. And it's, it's uh, relevant for, for great reason. And, you know, I think that's where an effective uh, and well-executed biosecurity program can enhance the value of our brands more than anything. We know that if any given country has a reputation uh, for maintaining uh, sound biosecurity, uh, then that's going to uh, preserve and protect and and add value to uh, the products that that we uh, provide for the rest of the world. And and countries are going to be more accepting of that. On the other hand, if we fail to do that and we have a bad reputation uh, for you know, uh, our, our products as it relates to phyto and sanitary issues, then, you know, the opposite can happen. We will not have access to, to foreign markets. And so I think uh, maintaining free access, uh, you know, all the time uh, is, is absolutely critical in, in uh, ensuring that we must have effective biosecurity plans. And, and I think we see it uh, again today as a reminder with well, this current COVID uh, crisis. One of the first things that the U.S. administration did was, uh, you know, cut off the flow of people because we know people in many cases are carriers of any infectious disease, whether it's a human disease process or whether it's an animal disease process. And uh, maintaining that, that control is, uh, is very important. Our last question comes from Dwayne Grimes, a broiler grower in North Georgia. Dwayne's question is, how exactly will these biosecurity changes and restrictions financially impact the growers and the industry as a whole? Well, thank you, Dwayne. And it's always good to get uh, input from uh, our most valued partners. And, and that is our, our small family farms that, that provide uh, uh, an absolute critical uh, uh, service uh, for our industry and uh, I appreciate your concern uh, because it affects all of our livelihoods whether you know we're in management for a company or whether we are a small family farm that that uh, is a contract grower uh, it can have everything to do uh, in terms of impact uh, financially uh, if we do have a disease process, uh, for example, in 2015 and 16, uh, in this country, we had, as you know, avian flu occur. And, um, you know, for some uh, farms in some geographic regions, it was absolutely devastating. We lost all the birds. I think the uh, egg laying uh, industry lost 12% of our production capacity. Uh, during 2015 and it it just devastated some farms and uh, so it it can have that that effect. On the other hand, um, once we got past uh, that period, we fortunately have not had any more high path, uh, even influenza to speak of that's been widespread. And so I think we've seen uh, sustainability of our economic vitality uh, because of the effectiveness of our biosecurity plans. And I, I think this provides uh, an opportunity to, in, in many ways, uh, congratulate our industry for uh, developing, maintaining, and executing an effective biosecurity plan. Because uh, on the whole, if you look over decades in the U.S., uh, we've had a very effective uh, plan. Uh, other countries have had success as well 
uh, to varying degrees and, and some countries have not. And I think at the end of the day, it, it all comes back to how serious, you know, we take biosecurity and it can mean the difference between whether we have an industry, uh, whether that industry is economically viable uh, or not. So of all the critical things that we deal with uh, in terms of our economic vitality, I can't think of anything more important than biosecurity and uh, would uh, encourage uh, all growers, all family farms to, to, to follow strictly uh, companies' guidelines as it relates to biosecurity and animal husbandry and uh, reach out to learn more on a, a continuous basis. So I'm uh, glad that uh, you, you have an interest in that, Dwayne. And thank you for the question. Okay, that's about all we have time for today. We really appreciate everybody's input and questions, and we we'll look forward to the further discussions this may start about biosecurity and other key topics in the industry. We thank Bill for his time and his input, and we look forward to joining you all on the next MTech On Social Distance series. So please be sure to join us on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and thank you for your time.